Alright, in this second video we're going to look at ways to calculate the moment of inertia. The calculation of the moment of inertia can be quite complicated because it depends on the shape of the object and the axis upon which you're wanting to rotate it about. So it depends on the level of the course that you're in as well as the shape of the objects as to how much difficulty or what tacking method that you apply. In general, there's a couple of ways that you'll find it. It may be told into you in a problem state. Something says the moment of inertia is 4 kilogram meters squared about a particular axis. This is easy. They've given it to you. It's just like telling you the mass is 5 kilograms. You just put it in. You may have to use the definition to calculate it. If you only have a few particles, then the sum is not too difficult. If it's a continuous object, for instance, maybe it's a cylinder like this, then there's a whole bunch of little particles. And you can't do this with just algebra. If you have calculus and the system is of a particular density and shape, you can do it and you may be required to in the calculus-based course. But in general, the ones that are this, especially for non-calculus course, are limited to some sort of problem where you've got a few particles like we had in the first video and you use it to calculate with the definition. For shapes that are uniform, that you're looking at an axis through their center of mass, then there's often tables and you can look up the moment of inertia from the table. There is a table or figure 8-21 on page 208 of Gene Colley's book. It has some standard well-known shapes and you can look it up. In particular, there are certain ones that I would expect a student to know on a test. I would expect them to know the cylinder, and the reason for that is the cylinder is also the pulley, and we do a lot of pulley problems, so I expect them to know the formula for that one. I would expect them to know a hoop. I would expect them to know a rod or bar, and I would expect them to know a uh, sphere, solid sphere. That's it. Anything more than that? No, that's too much. I primarily would test the pulley and I'll test a hoop. But occasionally you see spheres or rods because there's a lot of bars. So you know these four and you're good on a test. If it's more than that, I'll give you a table and you can look it up. Now the table only works for the center of mass axis in general and sometimes you're rotating things about something other than the center mass. So instead of having a cylinder and rotating it through an axis like this, which you might be able to find on a table, what if the person took the cylinder and they connected the axis like this and they want to rotate it? Well, that does happen. And what you can do is use what's called the parallel axis theorem to get from the table to another axis by just doing simple algebra. And last but not least, you might solve Newton's second equation. We're going to find out later on that these torques is equal to I alpha. So if I can find the torques and I can find alpha, I might be able to solve for I that way. Usually, however, the goal is to solve for alpha. So we're going to need to know I. And that means we're going to need to either find it by A, by B, by C, or by D, so that we can solve Newton's second law. So, more complicated than mass, just like torque is more complicated than force. Let's take a look at some examples using these techniques. First one is just three balls, and I'm given a set of masses here. So, this one I'm told actually is one kilogram. I'm told that this mass here is 6 kilograms and I'm told that this mass is 4 kilograms and I'm asked to calculate the moment of inertia through an axis to the origin right here. So IO will equal the mass of the first times the distance from the origin to that first ball plus the mass of the second one times the distance from the origin to the second ball plus the mass of the third times the distance to the third ball. The first one is one kilogram mass. Its distance, however, is zero meters. It is setting at the origin. 
So it creates no effective moment of inertia. It's as if the mass doesn't exist. On the second ball, I have six kilograms. And here you find out something that's rather useful to remember. And that is, the distance we're talking about is this distance here. It is the hypotenuse of this triangle. And you're not wanting this length. You're wanting the square of that length. So there's no need to be doing square roots or anything with your calculator. What you need is the square of the x-coordinate plus the square of the y-coordinate because the Pythagorean theorem says the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other sides. So this distance is 2. So 2 meters, and I square that. And then this distance is 1 meter, and I square that. And I don't take any square roots. Let me go back and change my pin collar. Uh, now I'm going up oops, to this one. Not a very good hypotenuse. Sorry about that. Four kilograms. It's got one meter in the X and two meters in the Y. So the moment of inertia will be equal. This is zero. This is 6. Let's say 2 squared is 4 plus 1 squared is 1. That's 5. 5 times 6 is 30 kilogram meters squared plus. This is also 5. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 kilogram meters squared. So the total is 50 kilogram meters squared. And that's the effective rotational inertia if you try to rotate it about this axis. Now they ask me to change. They ask me to rotate it about another axis. And the axis they ask me to rotate is about this axis. So let me draw that place in. They're asking me to rotate it about here. So all distances must be calculated from that point over. So for instance, that's now R1. And this is now R2. So all the R's change. Their distances change. Let's go back and calculate the I's. I'll call this I. And it's going to equal 1 kilogram. But now the distance is going is 2 meters here squared. And then I've got another mass, which is 6 kilograms. But its distance, let me pull that down. Its distance is this distance here, which is 1 meter. So that's the distance I square. And then I have 4 kilograms. And when I calculate this distance squared, I'm talking about coming from here. Not a very good drawing, but up to there. Tell you what, let me undo that and take advantage of a right there. There we go. So this thing's got a 1 here, and then over here it's got a 2. So it's another one of these 1 meter squared plus 2 meter squared gives you this thing, which is 5 meter squared. So punching that in, 1 meter squared plus 2 meter squared. So I would be equal to, I got 2 kilogram meter squared. I have 6 kilogram meter squared. And then I have, if I did that right, uh, no, I didn't do 2 squared. This should be 4. All right. That's 6. And then I have 4 times 5. That's 20. So my I here is 30 kilogram meter squared. It is much easier to rotate. 
about this new axis than the original axis to the origin. Now where is the easiest axis, a, axis to rotate about? The easiest axis to rotate about. Now this is a totally separate thing. I.e. I is minimum. is the center of mass axis. So one of the reasons it was important to cover center mass in the previous chapter is that's the place where the moment of inertia is the minimum. All right, I'll do another video on another thing in the next video.